Hey, it's Amethyst Virgo. So I'm back and I slightly changed the title of these series to include the word archetype. So first I called it the three types of Virgo, Aries, and Sagittarius. As I said earlier, I am not going in any particular order. I usually go in order. There's usually a method to how I do and bucket signs together, but I didn't do it this time. And now I'm taking suggestions. So I am going to be focusing on Pisces, Libra, and Taurus in this particular um, recording. However, I like the word archetype better, okay? And so we know an archetype and we think of it, it is the qu quintessential essence of what something is. An archetype is easy to remember, okay? So when we think of just archetypes in terms of just even types of people, right? The matriarch, the crone is an archetype. Um, the idea of someone who is brave, the brave warrior, all those different things are archetypes. There's actually a really good book on that. Anyway, I, I do want to explain the reason why I changed the title because I think it makes more sense when you're thinking of these different signs. Of course, as someone mentioned in one of the comments, yes, you could be a blend of all three or two or whatever. This video is definitely for whatever way you choose to use it um, in terms of understanding your own um, astrological identity, but from dictionary.com, just if, if anyone is unfamiliar, an archetype is the original pattern or model from which all things of the same kind are copied on which they are based, a model or first form prototype. So when we think of certain types of people or certain types of signs, you will definitely see that it seems, oh yeah, I've met a Pisces like that. Oh yeah, my sister's like that. Oh yeah, my boss is like that. Like when you hear, when you hear the description of something, it instantly brings something to mind that connects us on a universal level that's archetype. Um, and of course, if anyone's Many of you may be familiar with Carl, Carl Jung. Um, it's also a type of Jungian psychology, this idea of collectively inherited unconscious idea, of a, a collectively inherited unconscious idea, pattern of thought, image, et cetera, universally present, present in individual psyches. Okay, so let's jump into our first one. So Pisces, okay. So Pisces, we want to um, understand that with Pisces, the three different types, um, of course, you can feel like there's your, your combination of all three. With Pisces, we have to understand that there's typically this assumption, this, um, and what archetype can be more of the one that carries the brunt of the image, right? So for example, some people may think when they hear Pisces of the quiet type, the quiet, quiet type, who doesn't want to be bothered, who doesn't really care to be as involved in what the rest of the world, the community, the society they live in is indulging in, right? This is the more pensive, reflective person. This is a person who's not necessarily trying to isolate themselves. They simply feel better when they are alone. Um, they're not bothered or tortured by not being involved. Um, they tend to be a little selective in who they do choose to be involved with. So this is not the type of Pisces that you're going to see that doesn't know who they are. They don't know what their identity is. These types simply know so intricately what they need. They know so intricately that what they do not wish to be a part of, that they choose not to engage in certain things that really don't speak to them, okay? They don't need your involvement. They typically don't need you to guide to mold them. So these are the type of people that make it a little frustrated because they maybe the quiet type, or maybe they're the type that isn't as extroverted, but they don't need guidance. They don't need your help. They know who they are. And sometimes when we see people who are quiet or reserved, there's an assumption they need someone's help. But sometimes the person doesn't need help. They just don't want to engage with certain people or certain situations. Um, and these people are more centered. They're more content in their own world. And it's usually a privilege if you are invited in their world. Um, you know, they can sometimes go to the extreme with the isolation, the extreme with not letting people in. That can cause issues when you do sometimes need someone because the more you push people away, the more they're not going to connect or the more they're going to assume that you can take care of all of your problems on your own. And at its core, Pisces should be connecting to people on a soul level, on a real intricate level. So the number one types, though, they can thrive off their solitude and thrive off being on their own, they sometimes do need to understand and balance that with other energy so that they don't become too, um, you know, too isolated. They don't become too disconnected from other people because at its core, Pisces should in some way be connecting to the world or showing the world something that needs to be seen. So um, now the second type um, as you can see here with this image, we have a heart. And this is the compassionate type. This is the Pisces that actually likes to be around people. Now, 
This Pisces type prefers to express their compassion. They want their compassionate nature to be seen and felt by other people. So this, they are going to connect or want to connect a little bit more with people on this level of feeling, of this level of being accepted. And this is the type that does need a sense of connection. Now, um, you can see sometimes that um, they may desire to be a part of something on a collective need. Now, this will differ from Aquarius because Aquarius tends to want to do that in a way that is um, ideological, right? I want to connect with people who have the same ideology as me. Aquarius, I want to connect with people who kind of want to do the same actions as I, I do. I want to connect to people who have the same type of initiative, right? But with Pisces, it's I want to connect to people so I can feel this level of acceptance, this universal love. And you can see more of the outgoing type or maybe the type that is more into philanthropy, into service, being a part of something because more important with this, types of, uh, this type of Pisces. Now, they have to be careful not to mend too much to the world around them. So we have to understand this is a mutable energy. And so when mutable energy is not grounded, it will want to it can be easily influenced. And if Pisces contains all this universal energy in it, right, it is easy to fall into something that may not fit with your core attributes or core self. That's why I say in particular for signs, I always say Sagittarius and Pisces need to know their purpose because these are mutable signs and these are more signs that are don't have this kind of firm conviction that you may sometimes see within, see within like an earth sign, so to speak. So I always say in particular, the mutables, um, especially the mutables that are not Earth, have to be careful with that, especially Sagittarius and Pisces, because they're searching for something, okay? And at the best, they have that something, and they use that to drive what they do in life. But when uncentered um, with Pisces, um, you know, this need to belong, this universalism, this universal love can sometimes lead to being too accepting of people and needing a little bit too much. And you don't want, you know, becoming too much of a chameleon. But this is the Pisces person, the second type that can get along with different types of people. There's less of this judgment. Uh, this could be a person whose social circles change throughout time because there is this level of acceptance. And Pisces, if we want to look at it from a spiritual lens, it contains everything. It's the last sign of the zodiac, right? It contains everything. It has the potential to be anything, right? Um, and so again, we would have to the individual, of course, the chart plays a role with that, but that would be the second type. Now, the third type is the type that wants to be not just extroverted to get the love and, and appreciation from people. It is, they want to be creative. There's a create, and the creativity means I need to show the world what I have. And this is the person that's really centered about what they have to offer. And this is the person who's not afraid to say, look, you know, at its best, I think Pisces is able to show us what is possible when we don't always see it, right? And so this could be the creative imaginative type. This type may still live in their own world, but they need their own world to be imprinted on the world. So this is where you get the people who are want to express, whether that is through writing, that's through singing, that's through music, that's through creating a business, that's through being themselves. And maybe this is a person who's like that type that wants everyone to like get along and understand the purpose of life. But the difference between the two and the three is the three would understand, the third type would understand their confidence a little bit more and want to imprint what they feel and what they sense life should be on other people. And a person who is creative will do that through creative efforts. They will do that through envisioning something and following it all the way through. And a person who is maybe a Pisces but not really creative is going to through it through is going to do it maybe through their personality. They're going to want the world to see and maybe be up and maybe be the type to uplift others or be the type to help others understand themselves in those types of ways. Now, again, could you be a combination of one and three, two and three, all one, two and three at different times of your life? For sure, of course. Again, this is for you to kind of use it the way that you need to use it. Okay, now, Libra. So with Libra, okay, let's think of the three major archetypes. Of course, if I want to go deeper, maybe I could do six different archetypes of all the signs. We don't have time for that. Let, most people will fall under one of these three buckets at least. This, um, the first type is deliberate. And I say a lot of like, we have to remember this is a cardinal signs, even Cancer. The cardinal signs, Aries, Libra, Capricorn, Cancer, cardinal signs don't need a budge. They simply take initiative. They simply know 
that something must be done and they get it done. And so the first type of Libra is the deliberator. This is the person who knows, hey, we have to look at both sides of this. Something has to be done. Let me talk to so-and-so about this so we can get on the same page. That is why Libra, sometimes that energy can be good with um, negotiation, law, things like that. Um, these are the types who are driven. This is the type that is confident, the type that knows that there is something that they have to do. And so this person will tend to be good in terms of work, in terms of work ethic, um, in terms of making sure people are on the right page. But again, as they, they, they have a Libra can have a great way of delegating things without making people feel like they're being told what to do. Sometimes you can get that a lot from Capricorn. You can get this kind of, I feel like I'm being told what to do by the Capricorn. With Libra, there's more of a suggestive nature to it, right? Libra is not always making you feel like they're forcing you to do something. Um, they can have more tact, more diplomacy, and that can sometimes make them um, good in certain situations, right? So the first type is deliberate, delegates. Um, the first type is can be more serious uh, because they know what they're trying to achieve out of a situation. The second type, um, this is the type seeking connection. This is the type that thrives off that interpersonal conversation. It's eight o'clock in the morning. They're already trying to have a conversation with you type, right? Um, this is the type that is initiating action between people that are more, um, that are more connections. So the first type of Libra archetype, I say, is more could be the type that just likes to get business done. Um, you know, just wants to get things done, get things out the way, wants to negotiate, um, this is the type that's more initiating things that could be more responsible, right? This is the type, archetype one could be more the responsible type. Um, you'll hear a lot, this person can init initiate hanging out. They're the person like, hey, you want to go grab a bite to eat? Um, this is the person who is always doing something. They, they like to do things together with people. And it could be, you know, they're the parent always trying to get their child to go bike riding with them or something like that. Like archetype two is personal driven. Archetype one can be more outcomes driven. So the second type, the initiation is more around de determining partnership, right? This is more of a nusion. Whereas the first archetype is more centered on ideas of the air quality of communication for the point or purpose of trying to obtain or get something resolved or done. Now, the third type, this is where we get the indecisive nature of Libra. The third archetype is can be um, the indecisive one, the wishy-washy, that's where you'll get that with Libra, where it's really sometimes that Libra can literally see both sides, but in an archetype of a person that can be very difficult when people may view this, some people that some as uh, shady or, um, and, and Libra creates the opposite of what it wants to create, which is ideally harmony, some le level of balance, but it cr can create that conflict when there isn't a decision made. Um, this is the type that struggles and sometimes when you struggle to make a decision you're inactive and so we have to notice that sometimes with libra or even taurus the inactivity is because venus can be relaxed but venus can sometimes be too relaxed so you would definitely see probably a different between difference in the work ethic of a first of a number one archetype versus a three archetype because three may just not really like to even commit to things they're supposed to do and of course, because Libra does tend to have that charm, that quality, you tend to believe the Libra sometimes, right? Because there's this idea that they're somehow going to, um, you know, you've seen like, oh, I've seen them be fair. I've got to trust what they're saying this time because Libra does have a certain level of wanting to smooth things over with people that can sometimes make even those that um, people view as they can't trust as trustworthy. Um, and this type, you know, they can, this type's loyalty is to balance. It's not to you. It may not always be to a certain thing. Their loyalty is to the ability to straddle the fence and say, you know what? Actually, I'm not picking a side. Actually, you know what? I'm not, you know, you're forcing me to pick a side. I'm not going to do anything. So you can sometimes see more in this one. Again, the pushing um, things off on other people. Um, not failing to kind of drive things themselves, which again, we know goes against the nature of what we already know with the cardinal sign. But this is where you can see the type that may take credit for things they didn't do, or they may perceive, oh, I helped with that if they did it. Again, not saying most are the third type, but this would be really important to, to watch if a person is sun in Libra, conjunct Mars in Libra, or even worse, if it's, you know, if the person has 
they're sudden Libra squaring like squaring Mars and Cancer because that means there is a lack of will. There's a lack of action. There's a lack of activity. Okay. Not only that, but the sun is afflicted if there's a square there. So um, this is the type that, you know, choosing is not important to them. And sometimes I think with how we deal with people, we have to understand people are what they are. And then we have to choose whether we're willing to deal with that or not. That to want to, a certain person, it may be, wait, I actually, maybe, you know, their South Node is in Libra as well. And they spent a past life having to, I mean, they're, maybe their South Node's in Aries. And they spend a past life having to always be decisive, always having to have to do something. And now they're here to learn literally how to look at things from both perspectives and not, and to literally fall back from having to be the one acting all the time. So sometimes the way people are is just the way they're astrologically or the way they are just supposed to be spiritually, mentally, whatever. And we have to decide whether we like that or not. Okay. Now Taurus. Okay. So when we're dealing with Taurus, Again, we are dealing with the bull. We are dealing with a stubborn nature. When is it good to be stubborn? When, you, when you're sticking to something that you said you would do and you do it. And again, like I said before, as a fellow earth sign that a lot of times people think earth is boring. Earth signs are boring. But look, how can we, you're on earth. You're in earth, okay? You're, you're, you live on planet earth, okay? If you think we're boring, whatever. Um, you know, Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus is not really the showstopper. But again, of course, you have other elements in your chart that can make you more interesting, probably. But what I would say about Taurus is the predictability. I know what I'm going to get because this is firm. It is rooted. OK, I know what I'm going to get from a Taurus more then I may know what I'm going to get from a Virgo. Because remember, that Virgo is um, ruled by Mercury. OK, so sometimes you can get some stuff there with Virgo, especially if the Virgo has a mutable moon as well. Different story. Point with Taurus, let's get with the first one. The first one, the first type, the first archetype is this mellow person. They're practical. There really isn't much. Um, and I guess why I say is people have to watch what they say because who doesn't want a friend or someone they know that's predictable? I know that if this person says they're going to be here at 10 o'clock, they're going to be here at 10 o'clock. Now, Taurus can move a little slow. Maybe it's 10.05, but Taurus is going to pull through when it pulls through, which is why this image here is a target. Whatever it is that says it's going to do, it's literally going to usually be there. Now, at the same time, if Taurus feels like something is too much, it might fall off. Um, that is where you can get a very direct person who's like, no, I can't do that. Right? It's too much for me. Taurus is really good at knowing as well what makes it feel good and what makes it feel comfortable. And so you sometimes can get the Taurus people who are like, nope, I can't do that. That's a little too much. And that doesn't mean the person can't handle being successful or being good at something. It's simply, it's a smart thing sometimes when we know what we can and can't do. Whereas you can have some people take on too much. Um, this could be the gentle giant type. Don't disturb their peace and you'll be good. Don't disturb their peace. Don't disturb what they like. Don't disturb what they like to do. And they'll be good with you. Okay. Um, reliable. Again, reliability is a good trait. Everyone who is in a relationship, in a marriage, um, who wants to be in a relationship, I bet you want someone reliable, don't you? But you think earth is boring. <laughs> People are like, earth is boring, but you want your partner to be reliable now, don't you? Not that boring, is it? <laughs> okay. Um, the second type, the second type, now we have this image here of the money and this chart, and we're thinking about climbing up um, something. We're trying to be resourceful. We're building up. This is the type who does care a lot about moving up. They care about the life they have growing, but they don't need it to go super fast. This is not a type of sign that's rushing anything. Um, and sometimes when you don't rush things, you get the better quality. When we rush to get the first thing, rushing to get the first thing that comes out, but Taurus takes its time and, you know, Taurus is associated with value, Venus, items, possessions. And so Taurus is taking its time looking over everything, pulling the, okay, what's this? What's that? And by the time Taurus is done, it has things of value, which is why it's important for Taurus people, Taurus North Node, even people who have um, Taurus Midheavens, whatever the case may be, if you have predominant Taurus energy anywhere or dominating Taurus energy, it is okay in some area of your life not to rush because you are, you are storing up reserves. You are storing the resources, the information, the experiences that you need to have. And so the second type can be quiet about what they have. Before you know it, they have more than you. 
before you know it, you're like, whoa, wait, where'd they get all that money? Or where'd they get, wait, I didn't know they were studying to be that. Wow. Because they're not flashy. T this is not the flashy type. This is the type who thinks that it's more important to have things that are going to to build up over time so that they can live comfortably. That's the second type. It's about I'm living comfortably. I nope, it's not about me having a $1.3 million mansion. It's about me having maybe a, a nice modest house and two properties that I rent out. That's the second type. The second type, it's it's the kid that's saving their money for something they really want. The second type, it, it's a little bit more bolder than the first type in terms of get, going for what it wants and being a little bit more um, you know, in excess with their work ethic. Now, this third type views items and possessions and what they have as their value. Now, this can be the type that is a little bit more materialistic, a little bit more, um, you know, I don't want to say selfish, but there's more of I'm holding on to what I have. I'm holding on to what I have, what belongs to me. That's that third type, right? Um, they could be quiet about what they have, quiet about them. But Taurus can be quiet a lot. Taurus is not going to say more than what's needed to be said. This is even true with the Mercury and Taurus, right? So sometimes you can accuse the Taurus like, you didn't tell me that. Why didn't you tell me that? Taurus is not going to say, it's going to be direct with it. And all the fancy words, smith, smithery, that is not Taurus. That's Mercury and Gemini. That might be Mercury and Virgo. That might even be one of these fire signs, you know, <laughs> to go over the top. The Mercury and Taurus is just direct. And sometimes it does mean like, hey, you didn't need to know that. That's why I didn't say anything. Um, now, all things invested must be able to produce something they want. So it's not even about a level of selfishness all the time, but it's literally, if they don't see something that's going to be lucrative, they're not investing in it. No, I'm sorry. I don't think that's a good idea for you. No, I don't think that, you know, no, sorry. Like this is the parent who tells their child, well, I'm paying for your college. Why are you majoring in that? That's not going to make any money. That is the Taurus nature thing. Doesn't mean the person, the Taurus son, maybe this person is a Taurus on the cusp of the fifth house and the way they parent is very Taurus-like, right? So that's one thing to notice here as well as about, now, they're un they can be unmotivated about anything that does not peak what they are trying to obtain and get. That's similar in a way to the first one as well. Remember I said, like, if they if something is going to be more trouble than it's worth, Taurus is really not interested in it. Taurus is only going for what it feels is going to yield the best result, okay? And so the third type is definitely not going to be interested in anything they don't see, and see is valuable. Now, this is where you can get a prototype of person, depending on other placements in the chart, that can be... Um, you know, accused of being snobby, accused of being stuck up, accused of being bougie, something of that nature, because there's this high, um, you know, this high level of value on what they have or what is popular, trendy, especially if this is a Taurus person with any Leo energy in their chart, but this is a very, it's important for them to have things. And it's sometimes for some people, it's important to show those things as well. Now, the archetype, I'm not getting into the hobbies. If we want to go into the hobbies of Taurus or any of the signs, you should probably go to my Through the Sign series where I talk more about the individual interests of the person based on the cusp signs. But this could be a person where maybe they are good at seeing the value in things. The third type, I think, is more good at the aesthetics of things. The second type is probably going to be really good at... Um, seeing the the payoff you know this could be a person who's really good in terms of like work ethic corporate um or you know understanding what what you should invest in can be um what they personally want to invest in um what what deals they want to make versus what they don't want to make could be the second type and the first type is more of the um you know not going to take risks unless it really fits the practical nature of the life they want to live the first type is more mellow just doesn't want um you know to have to deal with things that are extra things that seem over the top things that seem that they are causing too much of energy to be to be output it because we have to remember Taurus is ruled by Venus and Venus does want to relax so Venus is going to want to go home and relax and kick their feet up and Taurus is good for wanting to you know retire with their money retire with what they have and some Tauruses can live on a little bit but again it's going to depend on which archetype the person is and next the other signs requested based on the comments Leo Capricorn water signs I have that coming up because I just did Pisces, so I can get into Scorpio and Cancer as well, and Gemini. So if there's, I know there's not, there's only 12 signs of the Zodiac. Um, I've already just done six, but if there's any others that you think should be priority, please let me know, and please make sure that you also like the video and subscribe.